April 23rd, 2020, Yellow V4 was released. June 10th, 2020, Yellow V5 was also released. Marvelous, isn't it, at how fast we're progressing in our technology? I mean to get the next generation of the popular object detection framework so soon after its predecessor was just released. Is YOLO V5 really here? Or is it just a ruse? We'll investigate the evidence as objectively as possible right now in this video. So stay tuned. For those who don't know what YOLO is, it is a real-time object detection framework that stands for you only look once meaning the image is only passed once through the FCNN or fully convolutional neural network. I will not go into the technical details of how YOLO works as I have already covered two videos explaining YOLO v1 originated by Joseph Redmond et al all the way to YOLO v4 upgraded by Pachowski et al. And for those of you who are interested in my course there will be a link in the description where you can enroll in the full YOLO v4 course when it gets released. We cover the implementation of YOLO v4, training and inference as well as building cross-platform object detection apps using PyQt. Links will all be down below. Please also like, share and subscribe and click that bell icon if you like to learn AI in computer vision and augmented reality. Part 1. What has occurred? Ok so back to YOLO v5. Glenn Jocker, the founder and CEO of Ultralytics released its open source implementation of YOLO v5 on GitHub, which supposedly is said to be the state of the art amongst all YOLO implementations according to the Ultralytics GitHub page. Based on their results, it shows how well it outperformed Efficient Debt, which is Google's open source object detection framework. But what I find strange is that while they do not explicitly show their comparison with YOLO v4, YOLO v5 is said to be able to achieve fast detection at 140 frames per second running on a Tesla P100. Now this in comparison to YOLO v4 which benchmarked at a measly 50 fps stated on the article published on the RoboFlow blog titled YOLO v5 is here state of the art object detection at 140 fps by Joseph Nelson and Jacob Solovitz. Furthermore, they mentioned that YOLO v5 is small at only 27 megabytes. What? That is ridiculously small compared to the 244 megabytes of YOLO v4 with darknet architecture. What? That's nearly 90% smaller than YOLO v4. That's crazy. Now, in terms of accuracy, YOLO v5 performs on par with YOLO v4. So essentially looking at the claims in which YOLO v5 is said to be extremely fast, light in terms of its model size, but on par in terms of accuracy with the YOLO v4 benchmark. Just food for thought, if PlayStation or Xbox released a new console which had the same graphics performance, maybe faster load times but in a smaller package, would that constitute this new console as a next gen console or just a lightweight version of the current gen console like PS4 Slim or Xbox One S? Let me know in the comments what you think. Part 2 Questions So some further questions that cross my mind are Can you claim or name a technology, even open source ones, as your own even though you are not the original creator? Eh, I'm not sure. This one is debatable. Does using the exact same framework and just modifying it a bit give you the right to brand it as your own but just with an increment in the version number, in this case YOLO with version 5? Well, I guess this depends on the original creator or creators of the framework. You may or may not have heard of the original creator Joseph Redmond, whom tweeted in February 2020 that he would step down from his research of his brainchild YOLO due to the societal impact their work was having. He stated, I love the work, but the military applications and privacy concerns eventually became possible to ignore. Redmond created three iterations of YOLO in partnership with Ali Faradi. 
Now later this year, Joel V4 appeared in April 2020, but by none of the original authors, Wachowski at all. The paper was published and peer-reviewed, GitHub code uploaded to Alexi AP, forward slash darknet, and everything seemed fine. The technological upgrade was great and well received in the computer vision community. So does this mean that if Pachowski at all did it, then anyone else can take the Yola framework, make some improvements and increment the version number? Well, that's exactly what happened. Glenn Jocker, you know the founder and CEO of Ultralytics? Yeah, well they dropped Yola v5 like a bomb. Boom. Okay Ritz, tell us now. So is Yolo v5 legit or is it a ruse or a lie? Okay, okay, I know you want the answer, but hold on right there. Let's first examine the evidence. Let's get first things out of the way. Ultralytics at the time of this investigation does not have a published peer-reviewed paper on Yolo v5. So that already tells you that they don't have merit. I get that writing a paper takes time and that Ultralytics is a business and not a research group. However, how do you trust an implementation if the paper has not yet been published? When Yolo v4 was released, Pachowski et al. published a paper along with their impressive results. Community Reactions Secondly, to determine the legitimacy of Yolo v5, we have to look to the community and how this next-gen model has been received, including their analysis and evaluations. So if you go over here to Google and type in Yolo v5 issues, and let's scroll down to the source like Kaggle, we can see the comment by Mr. Hertig, who states that Yolo v5 is just renamed Yolo v3. The graph seems nice, but it is misleading. He then leads us to a link to the Yolo v4 author Alexi AB's repo. If you'd like to follow this repo, go to the link github.com, Alexi AB, forward slash darknet, forward slash issue, forward slash 5920. So on this GitHub forum, Daniel Berry posted a couple of links to the sources that claim that YOLO v5 is here. We have the Ultralytics YOLO v5 repo and the RoboFlow blog that I've mentioned earlier. And then this third link is a discussion here on Y Combinator based on the two aforementioned sources. If we delve into the community discussion, we can see that a lot of people are doubting and even calling the YOLO v5 model as bullsh**. There are statements that say that YOLO v5 was not tested against YOLO v4 under the same conditions. In other words, we weren't testing apples with apples. A person by the alias Enteros stated that the YOLO v5 article from Roboflow that it seems highly unlikely that a 90% small model would provide similar accuracy is referencing YOLO v4 and that the YOLO v5 repo itself performs comparable to YOLO v4. It's also speculation by Josh VM. I don't think YOLO v5 is semantically very informative. But by the way, if you read the issues from a while back, you'll see that Alexi AB's fork basically scooped them, hence the version bump. Ultralytics probably would have called us YOLO v4 otherwise. So this repo has been in the works for a while. Pachowski's evaluation. Back to the Alexi AB's GitHub discussion where we see Alexi's comments stating that the roboflow.ai blog has invalid comparison results. He goes on to explain that the latency shouldn't be measured with batch size of 32, but rather with a batch size equal to 1. So latency is the time of a complete data processing cycle. It cannot be less than the processing of a whole bunch, which takes up to a second depending on the batch size. The higher the batch, the higher the latency. So in terms of the claim that YOLO v5 is small, 27 megabytes in this case, Alexi goes on to destroy YOLO v5 in a statement, saying, and I quote, The compared size of models of small Ultralytics YOLO v5 version, YOLO v5s, which is 27 megabytes, with very low accuracy, 26 to 36 average precision on MS Coco, with the big YOLO v4, that's at 245 megabytes, with very high accuracy of 41 to 43 percent average precision on MS Coco as well. Remember what I said about apples to apples comparison? So in terms of speed, saying that YOLO v5 is fast at 140 frames per second, I quote Alexi again. The compared speed of very small and much less accurate version of Ultralytics YOLO v5 with accurate and big YOLO v4. 
they did not provide the most critical details for comparison. What exactly Yolo V5 was used? S, L or X? What training and test resolutions were used? And what test patch was used for both Yolo V4 versus Ultralytics Yolo V5? They did not test it on the generally accepted Microsoft Coco dataset with the exact same settings and they did not test it on the Microsoft Coco Coda Lab evaluation server to reduce the likelihood of manipulation. So as you can see, this is not really looking good for Ultralytics and their so-called YOLO v5 implementation. But thus far, we've been looking at things from one side of the coin. Let's get some perspective into the responses from Glenn Jocker from Ultralytics, as well as the guys from Roboflow.ai. Part 4 The Response So we have heard the roars from the community and you must be thinking to yourself Ok Ritz, these guys seem a bit sketchy and Yolo V5 cannot be trusted Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up Let's first get the rebuttal from the defendant before drawing our conclusions So Glenn Jocker from Ultralytics wrote a mini essay in response to the YOLO v5 release and naming. The crux of his response is that there was an intention for them to write a paper so that they can showcase these results and training methodologies. However, they are extremely limited on their resources and they need to maintain a balance to keep their business afloat. Okay, I get that. These are really tough times and some companies do push beta products out. I get that. He goes on to say that their models referring to the YOLO v5 implementation is neither static nor complete at this time. I'm fine with that also. However, in regards to their claims that his YOLO v5 implementation is better than YOLO v4 should not have been made and he should have made it clear that this project is under development, not only in his text on his repository, which I see that he has done now on his GitHub repo, which is good, but also in his comparisons, evaluations, code, and comments on other people's blog who state that YOLO v5 is better than v4. And this is just so that there's no confusion that just because there's a 5 at the end of YOLO v does not necessarily mean that it's better than its predecessor. Which brings me to my next point which is a very very important one regarding the name convention. Glenn states that YOLO v5 is an internal designation to this work and that the name employed here is not a concern for them. Hmm, okay, using YOLO v5 as an internal name is fine, right? Internally, you can call it whatever you want. Project XYZ, YOLO, COLO, POLO, ZOLO, whatever. But the minute you publish the paper and thus the name, it should be intuitive, it should be practical, and should not deceive people to thinking that you have the state-of-the-art YOLO model just because you've incremented the number to version 5. So as for Roboflow, while they're not to be blamed for promoting YOLO v5, they were naive into believing what was published to be true. My recommendation for them is for them to do their due diligence in future by properly evaluating the models and comparing apples with apples. They have since released a new article on their blog title responding to the controversy about YOLO v5. I'll have a link to that down below as well. It's quite a lengthy read where they acknowledge their mistake and essentially they do an in-depth comparison between YOLO v4 and YOLO v5, which the results are well discussed earlier in this video. I do however suggest that they take down the article YOLO v5 is here state of the art object detection at 140 fps or at least change the title to reflect the true nature of the model implementation from Ultralytics and also to avoid deception of the readers. Wow, that was quite a ride. Okay, so based on the facts, we know that YOLO v4 is still the state of the art in terms of the YOLO evolution. While there's nothing wrong with building upon other people's work, given the correct permissions of course, the use of YOLO v5 in the Ultralytics model name has been frowned upon in the computer vision community. Though I would like to know your thoughts on it. Was it right or wrong for Ultralytics to name the model YOLO v5? Do you think that this was just a sham to get people to notice their company, i.e. free publicity? Or do you think they were just oblivious to the whole thing and didn't think the name would be such a big deal? Let me know down in the comments. 
And for those of you who are interested in my course, there will be a link in the description where you can enroll in the full Yola V4 course when it gets released. We covered the implementation of Yola V4, training and inference, as well as building cross-platform object detection apps using PyQT. Links will all be down below. Please also like, share and subscribe and click that bell icon if you like to learn AI in computer vision and augmented reality. Anyways, all the links and sources mentioned in this video will be down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next.